Welcome to the wonderful world of backpacking, my friends. I'm Eric Hansen, the host of Backpacking TV. And this is my dog, Kovu. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. And if you're like me, you love backpacking. This video is really geared toward everybody who's on the newer end of the backpacking scale. If you have come to fall in love with backpacking or want to get into backpacking, this video is for you because I'm gonna be talking about the three golden rules of backpacking. Before I actually get into the video, I'd like to thank Lead Lenser for making this video possible. Lead Lenser makes amazing headlamps and backcountry illumination, and uh, they're perfect for any of your backcountry adventures. And if you need a headlamp, check out leadlenserusa.com for more. Okay, let's talk about the golden rules of backpacking. There are three overarching rules to backpacking to help make sure you have a good time, that you're totally safe, and that you're leaving the wilderness intact for other people. So the first golden rule of backpacking is be prepared. Now this, if you're a boy scout or were a boy scout like me or a girl scout, uh, it is kind of one of the things that they harp on all the time. And it's true, you have to be prepared. But, but what does that look like? So being prepared looks like having the right equipment and the right gear for whatever weather may come about. Now, often uh, we might be surprised by the weather in the wilderness or in the mountains or in the deserts because it can change quickly. So if the daytime temperatures are hot, making sure that you're prepared for daytime and nighttime lows that can fluctuate wildly. You are prepared for winter storms to roll in. You're prepared for whatever weather might come about that could be inclement or dangerous if you don't have things like rain jackets, uh, good sleeping bags that you can dive into and stay warm in, the things that are gonna be necessary for your trip. So in coming with being prepared, it looks like having a good shelter, a good sleep system, so a good sleeping bag and a sleeping mattress or a sleeping pad, the right clothing, the right layers, so a rain jacket, something like a down jacket, a mid layer, and quick drying clothing, as well as the right footwear to be wearing that's not going to include, that's not going to induce blisters uh, or problems with your feet, as well as having the right backpack and all of the things. And I have a lot of videos here on the channel to help you dial in your gear. But the golden rule of being prepared is having the right gear for whatever weather that may come about in a given situation. And sometimes those can be surprises. Sorry for the uh, shocking amount of light change that just happened. Uh, I was just being enamored by this amazing full moon rise that's been happening just behind me. And I had to stop and take a gander. Also of note, our cameraman crashed his drone. So he had to go find it. But that's neither here nor there. So uh, what were we talking about? Being prepared? Um, yes, so also in continuing on in the be prepared category, Things like knowing your route and knowing how to navigate that route. So I always like to have a paper map with me, a compass, uh, as well as some stuff on my phone, but batteries do die on phones and it's technology is not always great to rely upon. So knowing how to get uh, from point A to point B and back safely is a really important part of any backpacking trip. There's another one more safety piece that I do recommend with being prepared and that comes with telling somebody where you're going and what your plan is and having a plan just in case you don't show up. So that can save lives and it can make uh, your time much more uh, peaceful for everyone who loves you to know when, when to expect you again. Okay, the second golden rule of backpacking is to pack light. So I'm not talking about going super ultra light or being a really hardcore dedicated ounce counter, but in the, in the truest sense, every ounce does count. Now, if you are backpacking for the first time, I generally recommend not carrying more than 20% of your body weight. Now, obviously, if you're only like a 115 pound woman, uh, then that means you need to be going fairly more aggressive on having a light pack. So it, it's not necessarily a hard and fast rule, but I do think that that is a good general rule of thumb to help you measure if you're having, if your pack is too heavy or not. So how can you lighten your pack load? Uh, things like carrying less water. Water is very heavy. It weighs in at 2.2 pounds per liter. If you are carrying four, five, six liters of water, that is really, really heavy. And uh, I like to uh, you know, only carry what I need for the water 
and not carrying too much food. That is another thing that is really easy to carry way too much of. So my rule of thumb is to carry about two pounds of food per day and anything more than that becomes really quite excessive and I usually end up having six or eight pounds left at the end of my trip, which is no fun. If you can get rid of that weight, it's much better to be uh, going a lot lighter. I like to say that backpacking is an endurance sport, so if you feel great on the first mile of the trail, that's awesome, but it's not necessarily what's going to be the case at mile 10, at mile 15, at mile 50, whatever it might be. Your body will start to break down, you'll start developing blisters, hot spots, pain points, and if you have a lighter pack, you're not going to develop those pain points and you're gonna be enjoying it much more. Last couple items on this packing idea is to get your pack properly fitted. Now, a lot of people kind of ignore this or they think I'm a tall person, so I should get a large pack. And that's not necessarily the case. It has to do with the size of your uh, spine and not so much how tall you are. You can have, uh, you can be a tall person with a short torso uh, or vice versa, a short person with a long torso. It is possible, so going and getting your pack fitted. Uh, there's lots of gear shops that offer this service. I also have some videos here on the channel about getting your pack properly fitted. And the last item of packing properly is don't be a junk show. A lot of people when they're first getting started with backpacking, they run out of room, they pack too many things, and so they just start clipping and strapping things onto the side of their backpack. Uh, this summer, I even saw somebody who had a full-size mattress that they were carrying on top of their shoulders and it was just pretty bonkers. So if you can't fit it inside of your backpack, there's a good chance that you shouldn't be bringing it at all. The one exception I think to that is things like trekking poles, tents. Uh, there are a few items that can be lashed to the side of your backpack, but don't just have a bunch of dangly bits that are swinging and swaying every, with every step you take. It's not good, it looks stupid, and it's also not good for you. Uh, it will be much easier to backpack if everything is neatly tied down inside your backpack. And the last part of the golden rules of backpacking is to leave no trace. It is really important that we as outdoor enthusiasts are leaving the environment in its natural state, not impacting it, leaving it for other future generations to enjoy, as well as protecting the environment and protecting the wildlife that lives in that place. There are seven key parts of the leave no trace ethic. The first is to plan ahead and prepare, which we already talked about. The second is to travel on durable surfaces. Now that looks like staying on trail, hiking on slick rock, hiking on rock, as opposed to hiking across uh, untrammeled soil or plant life or things that will be impacted by the fact that you're hiking across it. If you can avoid it, it is much better to stay on trail, to stay on rock, to camp on rocks, to set up your tents upon uh, already impacted sites or places where you're not having to kill plant life or things like that. The third element of leave no trace principles is to dispose of waste properly. Now, if we're talking about trash, that means pack out what you brought in. Don't just throw stuff out because you think it will eventually biodegrade. Even if it's uh, apple cores, orange peels, uh, things like that, pack it all out with you, packing out all trash. And the way to take care of human waste is to bury it via cat holes, or sometimes you might even need to pack it out. It's best to look at the regulations of a camping area that you're gonna be going to. The general rule is to go 200 feet or more away from water sources, and then to dig a hole six to eight inches deep bury your poo, bury your toilet paper. Some places do, it is suitable to burn your toilet paper. However, many forest fires and firefighters in, in, and wild, wildland firefighters, brush fires have been started that way. So I like to just bury the toilet paper. And if you're in a sensitive environment where things won't break down, just pack out that toilet paper to begin with. The fourth leave no trace principle is to leave what you find. I here am in the southwest of Arizona and often I do hike and find arrowheads or artifacts or even just cool rocks that weren't uh, affected by humans. And it's best to just leave all those things be. We don't need to be taking all of the things that we find in the wilderness out with us. Leave them for future people and animals to enjoy. The fifth element of leave no trace principles is to minimize your fire impact. I myself am enjoying a nice campfire on this chilly evening and I have chosen to build this fire in an existing camp ring. 
in an existing fire ring. And that's a really important note. If we're camping or backpacking and you find existing impacted rings, please use those. It can be dangerous and it can be rude to build your own fire rings. But if you are in a wild place where there are no fire rings existing, I highly encourage you to learn how to clean up that fire pit after you and make it look like that fire was never there in the first place. Other parts of managing your fire impact look like using dead down and detached firewood, not hacking up trees or pulling bark off of living trees in order to fuel the fire. If your fire requires doing that, it's best to just not have a fire at all. Number six on Leave No Trace principles is to respect the wildlife around you. That may look like not shooting at it, not <laughs> throwing rocks at wildlife, or it could be as simple as not taking that selfie with that buffalo or bison who might decide that you should be trampled upon. So it's best to just leave the wild in its place, leave the animals wild. Don't try to approach it. Don't try to feed the wildlife. Don't get too close. Just watch, enjoy, observe, and save that wildlife for future generations. It's perfectly okay to simply watch and admire all the wildlife around you. Take a photo if you must and just enjoy it and drink it in. The last leave no trace principle is to be considerate of others. Now this might look like not blasting your boom box at camp or on the trail or not shouting to everybody and trying to test out the echo locations of cool canyons. Simply letting places be quiet, uh, not flying drones, things like that go a long way to letting others enjoy the place that you are in. Nothing wrecks a wild space faster than an obnoxious person being obnoxious. Don't be that person, and if that is you, well, try to be better. So those are the three golden rules of backpacking. I hope that you learned something and can take these for all of your future backpacking adventures to enjoy safely and to help preserve these places for future generations. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe here on the channel at Backpacking TV. There are all sorts of other resources for new backpackers, expert backpackers, and uh, we really welcome you to the community here of Backpacking TV. I'm going to now enjoy this fire on the chilly night, watch the stars overhead. So I'm gonna sign off here. I'm Eric Hansen, I'll see you later.